already in this class, like, I'm not even sure I'm doing this right. Good, it means it's, means it's succeeding. It means it's succeeding, I promise you. Okay, so, <sighs> stat edit. Okay. Now, I propose, I'm gonna I got data I'm gonna clear. Clear it all out, clear. I propose we put all this in at once, which is gonna make life easy. Let's put the ages in L1. Okay, let's go with the ages in L1. So we've already agreed that we are gonna call the 15 to 24 is 19 and a half years of age. We're gonna call the 25 to 34 is 29 and a half years of age. I know it's gonna be tempting to call them 30 or 20, but we don't wanna do that. Can anybody see why you don't wanna do that? <coughs> 490, we're not racing Yoda here. Average. Thank you, tell me your name again. John. John, thank you, exactly correct. If you round up in every one of those categories, you're overestimating the average by at least a half a year, if not even more. But on average, it's going to be half a year too. Now that might not that might not bother you. Maybe you don't care. But in scientific research, you've got to care because it's important. Thank you. It's exactly right. We're down to half, 59 and a half, 69 and a half, and bless the people that are 75 to 84 running a marathon. They might they might knees work that long. That's our data. That's our data all the way down. I know. What do you do when you delete your list? Oh, uh, easy fix, easy fix. Press your stat button. If anybody does this, if you press the delete button instead of clear, you've erased your list. Oh, yeah. Stat button, uh -huh. press five, press enter, it's back. Cool. Cool. Yeah, that's a bug T I I never fixed. Hey, say sorry. Oh. <laughs> now what do you do, you highlight and then push clear instead? Yes, and then down. <coughs> it should clear out for you. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. Now, I vote that in L2, we put the frequencies of the top finishers. We'll just go in order. So frequencies of the top finishers, seven, whoops, I'm in the wrong place, sorry about that, guys. Seven, 44, 19, 10, 1, 0, 0. Oh. And then bump over to L3, and let's put the bottom finishers in there. 1, 18, 28, 14, 9, 2, 3. Now you might be wondering, we're about to test the, the whole bell curvedness that Candace and I think Andrea and Sandra were all, were all talking about. I want to test that. Instead of going right to calculating an average, I want to look at the data first. Why would I want to look at the data before just calculating an average and saying the average is bleh? Why look at it first? Any idea? Why look at it first? What could you tell by looking at it? We've mentioned this a couple times today already. Outliers. Whether it's got outliers, I love that. Whether it's got outliers, yes. Because if it's got outliers, we're generally going to call it what? Skewed. Right. And if it's skewed, where does the average go? Do you remember? What? The outlier chases whom? Yeah. Damn it, the average chases the outliers question backwards in my mind there. Yeah, the average is going to head towards the outliers. And that's a problem because outliers, by definition, by loose definition, are unusual data. But an average should be typical data. So if the typical data point is chasing the unusual ones, you're getting kind of a skewed version of what typical looks like. Does that make sense? So by looking at the data and saying, yay, it's bell, or nay, it's not, we can decide whether or not we want to use the average as an, indi as an indicative measure of center. Is that fair? If we don't use average, what can we use instead? What, got some choices? What else could you use? I know it's Medium early, I'm sorry I'm yelling at you already. Median, yes, and mo, sure. Mm -hmm. But I like using the average because the average can have a standard deviation attached to it. So let's see if we can even use that. Let's take a look at the top finishers first, shall we? I think we shall. So, second y equals, Let's turn one plot on. I now have two. I'm going to turn one of them off. Let's just look at plot number one on. Make sure it's a histogram. This is probably already set up from the last thing you did, I'm guessing. Make sure the X list is at L1. Yes. Here's the kicker, though. Make sure the frequency says L2. It probably says one right now in your machine, but you don't want one because that would mean there's one 19 and a half year old, one 29 and a half year old, one 39 and a half year old, one 49 and a half. So L2 is just second two. 
So you want to get down there and second two, and then you got L2. Farish. Get in there, Farish. Good. <coughs> Let's take a look at it, yeah? The first not hit. What did I not hit? From here. Oh, zoom. Do you remember? Remember the number? Zoom nine. Zoom nine gets you a nice little graph. That's not bad. What would you call that? Would you call that? Is it thinking? No. It oh, it's, okay. So it's, if it's thinking, that means it's got too much calculation going on. We can fix that. What do you think? If you had to call that something, would you call it skewed? It is skewed. It is skewed. Nothing is going to be perfectly unskewed data. I mean, if you get perfectly unskewed data, that's when Harrison Ford runs away from the guy with one arm trying to kill him. Uh, back to that again. But the question I have for you is, do you think it's bellish enough to call it good? Your opinion. Your opinion. Who says yes? It is? Awesome. I say yes, too. Who says no, it's not? Put your hands up. If you say no, it's not, you're not wrong. Put your hands up. Good for you. There are other tools we can use. That's skewed. That's totally fine. That's totally fine. It is skewed. I guarantee it's skewed. The question is, is the skew so great to mathematically change the average? That's a judgment call statisticians make every day of their lives. If you say, yes, it's okay, as I do, I say it's okay. That's just my opinion. You don't have to agree with me. Ah, not at all. You can say, no, it's not. I can live with that. I can live with that. Candace, go. Mine doesn't look like that. It doesn't. Let's take a look at the break. Okay. After we get, I want to get graph number two turned on. We're almost to the break. I want to get graph number two turned on as well. Now, here's a problem. I'm going to show you something real quick. I'm going to turn a second histogram on. The second histogram is going to be uh, the bottom finishers. Okay, so what I'm going to do. Don't do this right now. We're going to get you guys caught up in a second. Here's why you don't do it this way. Okay, you ready? Okay. There's two histograms there. Can you see them? Uh-huh. How well can you see them? Not very well. Right. The problem is they're sitting on top of each other. They're the same color. They're both transparent. Excel exceeds in this. It's kind of a clever little name, Excel. In that if you graph two things at once, it either places them side by side or places them front to back. Okay? That's... Say that again. Or a color. It, it will definitely color them. You can could, you could pick the colors. <coughs> this is a problem. But... We have a workaround. I found a workaround. Everybody now, you guys go second y equals. This is a way to get two things turned on to look at the differences. Second y equals, go down to plot two, leave plot one. Plot one's great. Plot one's great. Turn it on. But instead of selecting histogram like I just did, back up one and select this guy. He's the one right to the left. I said right to the left. The one to the left of histogram, that guy right there. Sorry about that. It's called a frequency polygon. I don't know why it's called a polygon. It's a funny word for uh, using that. It's a polygon when I think of like a stop sign or something like that. Now, you see where it says X list and Y list? Mm -hmm. That's where you want to put L1 and L3. What if you have L2 in there? Just overwrite it with L3. So you're saying L2 is here, Katie? No, L1's there. L1 and you have L2 here? Y list is L2. Put your blinker on top of it? Okay. And hit second at three, and that'll put L3 in there for you. Oh. Cool? Okay, cool. Now, take a look by pressing graph. And now what you get is you actually get a histogram-y kind of shape that is differentiable from the other one. Does that kind of make sense? Getting, getting my, kind of my drift there as far as that goes? So it, it's a workaround. Excel's the better workaround. I'm not saying Excel's not the better workaround. It's just if we're sitting around and this is all we have with us, then that's a way of getting two graphs up. So what do you guys, before we take a break, vote. Skewed? Of course. Skewed enough to not call it Bell. And I see people shaking their heads up and down and left and right. Beautiful. I call them both Bell enough. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. You do not have to agree with me. You do not have to agree with me. I think they're bell-shaped enough. I can calculate skew, co skew coefficients for you if you want. You don't want me to. I can if you want. I'll happily do it. But I call those both bell-shaped enough. I love this little hiccup at the end. That's one of my favorite parts of the data set. I can just see this 85-year-old dude running across the finish line 18 hours after he starts. I love that. Just that image. But I call them both bell-shaped enough. My opinion. If you don't want your, that opinion, that's totally fine. We'll come back to that. But what you do right now is take five because I want to come back and make sure we can pull the measures of center off of these data sets too. Whether you use median or average or mode, whatever you want to use. Cool? All right, take five. Let's come back and do it.